This week's reflection is based on the passage that follows on from last week. And last week was talking about Jesus as the vine and ourselves as the branches. But this one, even though it continues the same theme, it's focusing on love. And the passage begins, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. And then he goes on with a command to love one another. He gives the greatest example of love, saying the best example is that someone should lay down their life for another. And of course, that's exactly what Jesus did for us. But the question for us is, do we really experience God's love? Do we actually believe that he could love us? I remember many years ago, a lady came to me and she wanted to ask me some questions about something I'd said in a sermon. And she was asking some quite theological questions, but it wasn't long before I realized that there was a much bigger question behind it all. And that question was, could God really love me? Here's someone who is seemingly a very committed Christian, very involved in the church, and yet she didn't really believe that God could love her. It's not an unusual thing. Many people feel like this because they look at themselves as what they think of themselves and they think, well, how could anybody possibly love me? Now, there are countless passages in the Bible that talk about the love of God, but there's one great passage in 1 John 4, and it begins, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. And then the verse goes on, God is love. Now, it doesn't say God is very loving. It says God is love. In other words, the very essence of God is love. And the very essence of love is God. But it also means that if we really want to know what love is, then we need to know God. Any love that's based on knowledge that is not of God is an inferior love because it just doesn't have the full expression of love. There's a well-known passage in Romans 5.8, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. In other words, while people were still disobedient to God, going their own way, completely dishonouring him, he loved us enough to come and live amongst us and be the sacrifice that paid for all our wrongdoing. God's love does not depend on our worthiness. He takes the initiative. His love for humanity extended even to those who were nailing him to the cross through nails through his hands, through his feet. But he asked the father to forgive them because he said, look, these guys just don't know what they're doing. God's love is there for us no matter what we've done. But this is where many fall into a mistake of saying, well, God loves us no matter what I've done. Therefore, it doesn't matter what I do. He'll still going to welcome me into heaven. It seems to be such a general assumption amongst the Australian population that it's a little bit frightening because it is completely ignores the fact that God is a holy and a righteous God and he cannot tolerate the normal human behavior. When the Apostle John saw the risen Jesus in a vision, it says, when I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. Now this is a disciple who lived with Jesus for three years, the disciple who's described as the one that Jesus loved. He was part of the inner circle of Peter, James and John. And yet, seeing the risen Jesus in all his glory was absolutely terrifying to him. He described him like this. The hair on his head was white like wool, as white as snow. And his eyes were blazing like fire. His feet were like bronze glowing in a furnace. And his voice was like the sound of rushing water. In his right hand were seven stars. And coming out of his mouth was a sharp, two-edged sword. His face was like the sun shining in all its brilliance. That's not a picture of gentle Jesus, meek and mild. Jesus said to John, I hold the keys of death and hell. There is judgment when we leave this earth. The only way we can afford being banished from God's presence forever is if we accept personally what Jesus has done for us. He paid the sacrifice. He made the sacrifice for us so we don't have to pay the penalty. Now, there are those who joke about, oh, I'll go to hell and I can party on with all my mates. What they don't realise is God is love. And to be banished from the presence of God forever 
means a place of absolutely no love. We love here because God's presence is all around us and that's what gives us the power to love one another. But to be completely banished from God's presence is to be completely without love. But back to the positives of the gospel. God is love. And while we're here on this earth, his love for us is unwavering. It's demonstrated in Jesus that he was willing to go to the cross for us, but also he still reaches out. Revelation 3.20 says this, and this is Jesus speaking. Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with them and they with me. In other words, Jesus never stops knocking. He never stops wanting us to invite him in so that we can have relationship with him. God is love and love inspires love in return. Yes, God does love you, even if you do not love yourself. God really wants us to know his love. And I've told this story before, I think, but on the Alpha Tapes, Nikki Gumbel tells the story of a Russian woman who didn't really feel that God loved her. She, she did, just didn't know. And she was being prayed for by another lady and the lady was praying in tongues and the Russian lady began to cry. The lady praying said, oh, what's wrong? And she said, you're praying in Russian. Now that really got the, the lady who was praying worried because she, she didn't speak Russian and she said, oh, what am I saying? What am I saying? And the lady said, you're just saying over and over, I love you, my child, I love you. What an, oh, just a wonderful way for God to assure her that the, those words came from him. I love you, my child, I love you. God is love. He loves us and he calls us to love one another. Thank you.